Tool number 14, most rainmakers know what clients want. So if you've been doing a lot of asking for feedback, this stuff's easy. Here's some deciding factors on why you get hired. You'll see, actually, yeah, you'll see the F word in there, have fun. Remember I told the story about the bond lawyer? Okay, a deciding factor? Come on. No, really, control. So if I am meeting with somebody and they have a need for control in the buying process, and I'm the seller of the service, and I have a need for control, and those two forces collide, who's going to win? Not me. And the other guy, yeah, it's chemistry. No, it's control. And there's a lot of ways that plays itself out. Feeling understood, being understood. That's a need all of us hunger for. So if you ask questions and listen very carefully to their answers and demonstrate you were listening, you'll meet that need. We have a, an almost overpowering hunger to feel understood. Industry knowledge. How many of you in here get paid a nice premium because you know an industry really well? Anybody? Well, that's a yeah. two-sided uh, question. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no premium. There's the premium. All right, how do we get paid because of their energy knowledge? Um, you know, again, have fun. If all else being equal, you have two clients, one who's fun, one who's not, and your plate's full, who do you take next? The fun one. If all else being equal, you got two service providers. One's really fun to work with and one's pain in the, you know what? Who are you going to want to work with? The one who's fun. I mean, this is just human dynamics here. Uh, power, which means I want to promote and get promoted. Looking good to the boss, saving time. Respect. Again, showing respect to people who perhaps are the gatekeepers. Huge, huge value. Uh, believe it or not, they can actually influence why you get hired and sometimes why you get fired. Respect. Avoiding blame. Avoiding surprises. We usually send those out monthly, although maybe you guys don't send them every month. What are they called? Your bills, <laughs> right? That's a, if you send a surprise, trust me, that's going to ripple in their organization in a way that's going to be very, very painful for them. And what I would suggest is you pick up the phone and call and let them know it's coming before it gets there. And if you need to, you fall on your sword and you say, hey, look, would you like me to meet with whoever so I can at least explain how it got there? And, you know, the, we want to make sure we have some uh, trip wires in there so that we get an early warning for the next time. Here's what we learned from this. What's, can you think of any others that aren't on here that would be deciding factors on why you might get hired? Cost. Cost or price. Yeah. But you know, that's fascinating that cost isn't there. And I think we, we often think that it's the overriding factor. Mm -hmm. I bet it's rarely the overriding factor. I, I think cost is what they'll tell you. Yeah. What's that a code word for? You don't understand me. You don't understand me? You don't understand the value proposition? Yeah. I uh, can't differentiate. Exactly. Yeah, you're a commodity, so heck, I'm going to decide on price. That's a failure when we get there. And it doesn't mean beat yourself up over it. It's just, look, dive deeper. Find out more. Yeah. But yeah. If you ask no questions in the sales process, right, uh, that would lead you to an understanding of any of these deciding factors, it is going to be cost. Because uh -huh. you know, then you've, got, right. you've got no way to demonstrate that, in fact, you get them, you understand what's really important, you understand what they value, you know, all those kind of components, what they like, what they don't like, how they like to be served, how they don't like surprises, you know, all those kind right. of, if you've never asked any questions around that, it's going to be cost because it's the only thing they can right. judge you on because you've demonstrated you actually don't want a relationship, yeah. you just want to serve them, you know, you, know, you want to win the work. Right. But it is interesting because I wonder how often we ask the kind, you know, the, the qualitative questions in the sales process that get us to understand what's really going on here. You know, why are they really putting this work out? What do they really need done? And, and sometimes I would even ask that as a question. So give me the context for why you've put this thing out there, for either for bid or, or why you're going in this direction. What are some of the payoffs you're hoping to get if we're successful right. in accomplishing what you're looking to engage us for? That's all value-based. Now, let's go back to if you put people together for the mutual benefit, so you're actually a little bit more, but you've brought four new customers to your client that total seven figures, 
And the guys down the street who do the same work have made zero introductions. I like your value proposition more. So the, the, the whole networking piece can tip the scales even on the selling side, but Peter's absolutely right. I actually had a client once, they were in a beauty contest, convincing, trying to s explain to the general counsel, we're going to take all this stuff off your plate, you're not going to have to do any of this stuff, it's going to make your life so much better. Then they find out late in the meeting, because they forgot to ask the question, this guy's paid based on how many things he's second chair on, you know, within the thing, so he wants to be in the middle of this stuff. He wants his name on all of it, not none of it. So they were literally going in the exact opposite direction of what the, the value was for the, for the person he was meeting with. And we do this all the time. What's also noticeably missing besides cost? Technical. Technical. Yeah, where's technical brilliance up here? Well, guess what? That's the ante. They probably wouldn't even talk to you. As the value of being Deloitte is they're probably going to get the benefit of the doubt there in many cases. Not at all. But that's the ante to get in the game. Then we still have to make the decision, okay, do they understand my business? Have they done a good job of identifying and understanding my needs? Are they asking great questions? Do they show a genuine interest in my business? This takes practice, uh, just pure and simple. If you're, if you're already good at this, great. You know, but here's the thing. This is a model for preparing for a meeting with a prospective client. So if you have a junior partner or even some of the director levels or senior managers who come to you and say, look, I'd like some advice. I got a meeting with a prospective client. They may want to try and pull you into it, which is fine, but it's like, what should I do? What's the structure? What's the framework? There it is. If they have a better one or you don't like this one, you got a better one, use it. But in the absence of something else, this works very nicely because it's giving you a way to prepare that's very focused. So you want to get personal, understand the client's industry, you understand and you make it your mission to understand the business itself, the company, and you make it your mission to understand the person, the person's personal needs. You do all of those, you are going to have very little competition. So here are some things. How well do you know your clients? Could you tell me who their ideal customer is? Could you tell me who their key client is? Uh, how, how your key client contact earns bonus compensation, because that will predict their behavior. Have you been on their website? Have you toured their premises, their place of operation? Do you know who their major suppliers are and what they need? Do you know who their competitors are and who they're the most concerned about? Do you know what their hurdle rate is? How many know, I assume this is a room full of people who should know what this is, right? Hurdle rate, what's a hurdle rate? Yeah, it's what they, they, they're gonna, if they're going to invest in capital, they need to get a certain return before they'll make that investment. Yeah. So, but again, part of this is just making it your mission to understand your clients that well. And what I find is only the rainmakers tend to know those, the answers to those questions with any kind of depth. 